Praise the Lord, everyone. Praise the Lord. We are glad to be in the house of the Lord this day, this May 1st of 2021. It is 2021. Amen. May 2nd. Let us center ourselves for the call to worship. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, indeed it faints, for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Happy are those who live in your house ever singing your praise. Happy are those whose strength is in you and whose heart, heart are in the highways to Zion. For a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. You may be seated. Okay. Amen, amen. In this, in this season of technology, Lord, you still will be praised. Amen. <laughs> Let us bow our hearts and our minds and center ourselves for the invocation. Dear precious God, we are thankful, Lord, yet to be alive. We are thankful, O oh God, to be able to experience new life on this day full of your grace and your mercy. And now we ask, O oh God, that your Holy Spirit would come and be with us, O oh Lord, in our temple. Whether we find ourselves, O oh Lord, here in your house, whether we find ourselves, O oh Lord, in our own homes, O oh Lord, whether we find ourselves in nursing homes or even on the job, we know, Lord, that your spirit is with us wherever we are. And we ask, O oh God, that you would just come and inhabit your people this day, that we might hear from heaven, O oh God. Cleanse us, O oh Lord, to receive all that you would have us to receive this day. Center us in you, O oh God, that we might give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise of which you are most worthy to receive. Bless, O oh Lord, the one who would bring the word on this day, O oh God. Let him find himself deep in your cleft, O oh God, that he may bring a word of healing, of restoration, of joy in us, O oh God, in you, O oh Lord, that we might receive all that you would have for us this day. Just use us, O oh God, as, in a special way, O oh Lord, that you might be pleased with our praise. This we ask and pray in the matchless name of Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Our hymn of praise and adoration is Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine.
have a story. For those of you who have a song, praising our Savior all the day long for his goodness and his mercy towards us. Amen. For those of us who have a story and a song, we also have a Savior. And we have an Apostles' Creed that tells a story of what we believe. So let us seep deep into our hearts and recite the Apostles' Creed, that which we do believe. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty, from thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. This is my story. This is my song. Amen. Good morning, Lomax. Um, we're going to do our scripture lessons. Now it's the time for our scripture lesson. And I will be reading from Isaiah 55, verses 1 through 3. Then we're going to skip down to Isaiah 55, verses 6 through 11. I will be reading from the New, Inter mm -mm, new, revised, sir, new revised Standard Version. 
And thus it reads, Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters, and you that have no money, come, buy, and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor and that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me, listen, so that I may be live, so that you may live, listen, so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. Verse 6, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them and to our God. For he will abundantly pardon for my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow came down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout good seed to the sower and blessed to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of God for the people of God. Praise be to God. As we center ourselves, our hearts, our minds, our spirits, as Pastor Nelson would come after our prayer hymn to lead us to the throne. Think about those things, those petitions, those thanksgivings that you have to share with the Lord so that you will be in right relationship and in right posture as we go to the throne.
you have rescued us completely set us free and we are yours yes we are yours was lost but now we're found blind but now we see and you never no, you never gave up on us and oh how you loved us and oh how we love you Cause there is no one like you beautiful say wise and gracious God we thank you for reminding us through that beautiful song about a beautiful Savior that it's a privilege for us to be able to come on bended knee and with bended hearts before your holy presence God far too many times we come with a wish list we come with demands even. But God, do we spend enough time just honoring who you are and your holy presence? And so God, we've come to say that there's none like you in all the earth. We've come to thank you, God, for being such a wonderful God to us. A God who loves us in spite of who we are. A God who blesses us despite what we do. A God who picks us up out of the sewer of life that allows us to be raised again to new life. God, we thank you for being that God. We thank you for being a God of light and love, a God of grace and mercy, a God of protection and provision. And so God, we've come to praise your name. God, before we dare ask for anything, we've, we've come to lift up your name, God. We've come to say there's none like you, God, in all the earth, God. Lord God, we've come to thank you for Jesus, one who was sitting up high but decided to come down and dwell among us, one who put on flesh, God, and, and walked among us and, and then bore the sins of the world even though he was without sin. God, how many of us would do that? How many of us would bear the sins of others when we had no fault in ourselves, God? We thank you, Jesus, for loving us that much. We thank you, God, that you stayed up on the cross so that we would not be lost in our sin, God. We thank you, God, that death did not have its way, but that you got up with all power in your hands. And so, God, we have hope in every situation. 
We thank you that you sent back the Holy Spirit so that we wouldn't feel alone, God, so we wouldn't feel orphaned, so we would have a counselor and an advocate, one who encircles us everywhere we are and everywhere we go, one who goes before us, one who comes behind us to clean up our messes, one who's over us, one who's below us. God, we come and thank you for the Holy Spirit. And so, God, on this first Sunday in May of 2021, God, we're not coming asking for anything. But today, God, we're just going to praise your holy name. We're going to give your name all the praise, honor, and glory. God, yes, the effectual, fervent prayers of the righteous availeth much. And we know, God, there are those with situations that they need you to come into. But, God, they are encompassed in our praise. And so, God, we're just going to praise you in advance for what we know you're already going to do. What you're already going to do in our finances. What you're already going to do in our bodies. What you're already going to do in our homes. What you're already going to do on the job, God. We come praising you in advance, God. Because we know you're that kind of God. And so, God, we thank you for this opportunity to come before you. And we give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Because, God, you are our beautiful Savior. And there's none like you in all the earth. And it's in the name of Jesus, who is the risen Christ. Jesus, who is coming back again. We give your name all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory. Let the people of God say amen. Amen and amen. Pastor Nelson for that most fervent prayer. Were not your hearts warmed as we just acknowledge the presence and the spirit of such a loving and beautiful Savior? As we continue in the posture of worship today, now is our time that we may worship God with our tithes and with our offerings unto him. For everything that we have we have because the Lord has thought favorably on us to bless us with it. And so we ask you would now get out your smartphones, go to Givelify, and not tithe to Lomax, not give an offering to Lomax, but give an offering to the Lord to thank the Lord and bless the Lord for all that he has given unto us. And for those who want to mail in their donations, you may see the address on the screen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father God, we are just so thankful, O oh Lord, to just call upon your name. We thank you, O oh Lord, to, for being in right relationship with you. And we thank you, O oh Lord, for all the things that you have blessed us with, O oh Lord, even our finances. And now we ask, O oh God, that you would receive back unto you that which you have given unto us, that you would, Lord, accept our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings, O oh God, that you would take even the little that we have, O oh God, and multiply it in the heavens, O oh God, that we may continue the work that you have called us to do in this branch of Zion. We ask, O oh God, that you would just continue to open up the windows of heaven and pour us out a blessing that we don't even have room enough to receive. Bless, O oh Lord, the gifts. Bless, O oh Lord, the givers, O oh God that everything that we have given unto you this day would be pleasing to you. For you are our Savior and our Redeemer, and we want nothing more than to give you the glory and the honor 
of which you are so deserving. So we thank you, O oh Lord, for these gifts. Bless us and keep us in your care. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we prepare to receive the word that the Lord would have for us this day, we will be blessed again by our ministry music, our song of preparation, He Looked Beyond My Fault. Need. 
My chains are gone I've been set free My God, my Savior Has ransomed me Unending love, amazing grace. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. God for our music ministry on this morning under the direction of Dr. Jackson. I believe this is your goddaughter, your niece. Thank you for blessing us this morning. You have a beautiful spirit about you. If we could look to the word this morning, we will be in John the sixth chapter. John the sixth chapter. And we're going to begin reading at verse number 47. John chapter 6, beginning at verse 47. Very truly I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that you may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Jews then disputed among themselves saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? So Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, Unless you eat of the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Those who eat of my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood abide in me, and I in them. Just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father, so whoever eats me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, not like that which your ancestors ate, and they died. But the one who eats this bread will live forever. He said these things while he was teaching in the synagogue at Capernaum. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for the sweet, sweet spirit in this place. We thank you for your holy presence in this space. And not just in this sanctuary, but wherever you may be found, whether at home, on the bedside, in the hospital, behind prison walls. We know, God, that you were able to penetrate all spaces and all time. And so, God, we pray that your Holy Spirit would magnify itself in this place and in this time so that we might receive the word that you would have for us. I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable unto thee, for, Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. And it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. 
For many of us, maintaining healthy eating habits is always a challenge. And that was before we were locked in the house for a year plus due to the ongoing global pandemic. While some people have used the last year to change their eating habits and physical fitness routines, many have put on what are being called pandemic pounds, which they are desperately trying to lose as we get closer to most things reopening. Even before the pandemic, one of my favorite television segments to mock is on the Today Show and it's entitled, Eat This, Not That which features a guy named Dave, and in his segment, he takes foods that are popular, foods that taste good, but are unhealthy and high in calories, and he offers a more healthy alternative. I don't know about you, but when I see the segments, I begin talking back to my TV saying things like, that looks disgusting. You know that food is not good. I'd rather not eat than have to eat that. These would be some of my personal excuses for not changing some of my eating habits. Today, as we prepare to receive the Lord's Supper, our communion with meal, if you will, God wants us to consider our spiritual diets as we consider the subject, eat this, not that. Eat this, not that. Yes, we know that God has pushed us in this direction today because our spiritual diets are important for us if we are going to maintain our spiritual bodies. I was led in this direction when I was reading 1 Corinthians 15, 40, that said, if there is a physical body, there is a spiritual body. We have a physical body, but we also have a spiritual body. And in 1 Corinthians 15, Paul deals with the resurrection of Christ and the resurrection of the dead and the resurrection of the body. And as Paul is dealing with the resurrection of the body, he makes clear that just as there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. And he makes the point that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. In other words, those who are raised to eternal life will be raised to new life in their spiritual body. God pushed me in the direction as we tried to understand and tried to ponder this idea of our spiritual diets. And so we have to understand that when we talk about our spiritual diets, it's for the purpose of making sure that our spiritual bodies are full, that our spiritual bodies have been taken care of, that we have a healthy spiritual body. And so it is that we find ourselves in John 6 today, where Jesus makes clear that our spiritual diet should consist of certain things. And, and this is Communion Sunday, and Jesus tells his followers in what I'm calling his sermon to say, eat this, not that. What do you feed your physical body? We've been told that a healthy diet consists of five portions of a variety of fruit and vegetables, especially dark green, red, and orange vegetables. That a healthy diet consists of beans and peas and lentils. That a healthy diet consists of a little dairy or a substitute dairy. That a healthy diet consists of fish and lean chicken and less beef and less pork and some small amounts of unsaturated oils and spreads. I, I have to pause there because I have some pork chops that are in the crock pot right now in some gravy getting ready for service later on. So I have to confess about the, the physical body, but it is white meat, right? And finally, a diet involves consuming a lot of water. Unfortunately, for many of us, our physical bodies crave things that are not healthy for us, such as fried food and salty food and sweets and processed foods and fast foods and sugar-laden drinks. But we have to understand that those things are not good for us, and they're not the best diets for our physical body. But what is the best diet for our spiritual body as we focus on our spiritual diet. In John 6 verse 27, Jesus says, do not work for the food that perishes, 
but for the food that endures for eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you, for it is on him that God the Father has set his seal. Here we see our first point today. Jesus says, eat this, not that. Eat eternal food and not earthly food. Eat eternal food, not earthly food. As we come to the communion table, as we live our spiritual lives, and as we feed our spiritual body, Jesus is telling us that we should be eating eternal food, not earthly food. And at the beginning of John 6, the so-called feeding of the 5,000 has been recorded. If you go back and look at the beginning of John 6, Jesus makes the point later in John 6 that the crowd, many of whom saw him feed the 5,000 plus, were only following him because of the physical food that they'd seen him feed people with. Jesus says in verse 26, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw signs, but because you ate your fill of the loaves. In other words, you are following me because I fed you, not because of the miracle that you saw take place. You are focused on earthly food, not heavenly food, food that Jesus says does not perish and does not spoil. How many of us like the people are like the people in the crowd? We follow Jesus when he's feeding us the earthly food that we want. A job, a car, a home, a relationship, wealth and status and popularity, even physical health. These things are all earthly foods because they are perishable. They are not eternal. They are things that will spoil and fade over time. For far too many of us have no problem following Jesus when we have earthly food that we so crave. But Jesus says to us that he wants us to understand that we should be eating a spiritual diet that's needed to sustain our spiritual bodies, and it should consist of eternal food, not earthly food. The eternal food is imperishable, and it does not fade or spoil. So what is the spiritual food that we should be consuming? What is the eternal food that does not go bad? Eat this, Philippians 4, 8 and 9 says, Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worth praise, think about these things. Keep doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen, and the God of peace will be with you. Eat this, Galatians 5.22 says. The fruit of the Spirit is love and joy, peace and patience, kindness and, and generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Eat this, John 1 says. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. And so we find at the end of John 27, as he tells the, the crowd to focus on the eternal food, not the earthly food, Jesus says, for it is on him that the God has set the seal. How many of us look for USDA seal on the food that we eat? You know, USDA stands for United U.S. Department of Agriculture. And if we see that seal of approval, especially when it comes to meats, we know that the food is okay to eat. But Jesus is saying, I've got the FDA seal of approval on me. I've got the Father's divine approval on me. And if you eat of me, I am the eternal food that will not perish. Jesus says, eat eternal food, not earthly food. Again in verse 32, Jesus is again speaking to the crowd and says, Very truly I tell you, it was not Moses who gave you the bread of heaven, but it was my Father who gave you the true bread of heaven. For the bread of God is that which comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Jesus is talking about heavenly food, eternal food here. 
Jesus is making clear that this food does not come from man, not even Moses, who was held in high regard by God, but heavenly food, even the manna that God provided the Israelites, was provided by God and God alone. Jesus wanted them to not only understand that this is heavenly, eternal food that came from God, but that the true bread, the true food, was standing right before them in the form of Jesus. Yes, manna was heavenly sent by God from heaven, but it served an earthly need. Not even manna was eternal food. Jesus is the only eternal food. And so as we prepare to eat from the communion table, God wants to remind us, eat this, not that. Eat eternal food, not earthly food. As Jesus' revelation continues, he says, beginning in verse 35, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. I love this verse because Jesus is saying, when we operate in Jesus, we will always find ourselves full and fulfilled. Here we find our second point, eat this, not that, eat filling, not unfulfilling food. Yes, eat filling, not unfulfilling food. How often do we consume empty calories? Calories that have little nutritional values. Calories that leave us hungry. Calories that leave us thirsty. We can eat chips and cookies and other snacks all we want, but they have little nutritional value. Often after we eat these things that have little nutritional value, we find ourselves saying, that isn't what I wanted. Why? Because the food had no nutritional value and your body was craving nutrition and you just fed it some junk. And so now your body is still craving the nutrition that it really was seeking. That's empty calories. They have no nutritional value. They do nothing for your body. When it comes to our spiritual bodies, don't you know that the things of the world will leave us unfulfilled? They leave us hungry and hungering. They leave us thirsty and thirsting. The things of the world leave us hungering for a meaningful relationship with God, not fake friendships. The things of the world leave us thirsting for a real purpose in God, not just meaningless job and work and busy work even in the church, but a purpose in God. The things of the world leave us hungering for God's love, not worldly lust. The things of the world leave us thirsting for God's affirmation, not others' admiration. Jesus' words remind us that the Israelites in their wilderness and wandering experience, that they were hungering and they were thirsting. But what they did not realize is that they weren't just hungering and thirsting for physical food and drink, but they were hungering and thirsting for a closer walk with God. Just a closer walk with thee. Granted, Jesus is my plea. Daily walking close to thee. Let it be, Lord. Let it be. Oh, how many of us wander in the wilderness of our lives, thinking that we're hungering and we're thirsting after the things of the world, when in fact we're hungering and thirsting for a closer walk with God. Jesus says, if you consume me, who is the bread of life, I promise that you will never be hungry. You will never be thirsty. There are no empty calories within me. Everything that I have to offer is fulfilling, and you will walk away feeling full. Jesus says, eat this, not that. Eat filling, not unfulfilling food. This food can only be found when we consume Jesus, who is the bread of life. What happens when we don't do that and we eat the things of the world? Well, Jesus points to manna as an example because he says, yes, manna did meet a physical need that the Israelites had. But in the end, it was not enough to keep them alive from a spiritual standpoint. Think about that thing. They needed to eat the manna for their bodies, but their, the manna did not allow them to ultimately not die and be raised again. And so we can eat all the physical food we want. We can even eat the most healthy diet. But one thing is certain that all of us will die. And so Jesus wants to understand that there's some spiritual food that we need to eat 
that will perform a spiritual purpose. And he wants you to understand that I am speaking about myself as that food that will allow you never to die. This is the bread that comes down from heaven so that you can eat it and not die. Unlike the manna that was consumed by the Israelites in the wilderness. When you eat the bread that comes down from heaven, that being Jesus, it feeds your spiritual body. And it's the spiritual diet that will ensure that we never die. Jesus said, I am the living bread that, that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give you for the life of the world is my flesh. Jesus is this living bread. Jesus is the bread of life. Jesus came in the flesh and offers himself as a gift for the whole world. Everyone and anyone who's willing to take a chance and eat the flesh to consume Jesus so that they can live forever. Jesus says his flesh is for the Jews and the Gentiles. His flesh is for men and women. His flesh is for blacks and whites, for Asians and Hispanics, for all ethnicities and racial mixtures in between. It's for all humanity. His flesh is for those who are gay and those who are straight. His flesh is for the young, the old, and all those in between. His flesh is for Catholics and Methodists and Baptists and Pentecostals and holiness and Muslims and and Jews if they will accept Jesus and consume that he is the divine Christ if you accept Jesus it doesn't matter what you call yourself as long as you recognize that he is the living God and so as we prepare to approach the communion table Jesus reminds us eat this not that eat filling not unfulfilling food belief in Jesus is that spiritual food Jesus breaks down his eat this, not that teaching even more particularly as we move forward. In verse 53, Jesus says, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Jesus says, Those who eat my flesh and drink my blood have eternal life, and I will raise them up on the last day. Here's our third and final point. Eat this, not that. Eat to eternal life, not eternal separation. Eat to eternal life, not eternal separation. In, in verse 52 of our text, we find the key word in our scripture. It says, unless. It is a conditional word used by Jesus to say that if you don't eat my flesh and if you don't drink my blood, you cannot live in me. In other words, Jesus is saying that in order for you to experience life in me, then you must eat my flesh and you must drink my blood. You must abide in me and I must abide in you. And if we don't abide together in one another, then you cannot experience eternal life, but rather you will experience eternal separation. Jesus says, those who eat my flesh and drink my blood, those who abide in me, and in whom I abide, I will raise them up on the last day. I will allow you to experience eternal life, not eternal separation. And so when we come to the Lord's table to partake of his body and his blood, it is an act of faith that says that we believe that we abide in Jesus and that Jesus abides in us. That we believe that we have a relationship with Jesus and he has a relationship with us. One that will allow us to experience eternal life and not eternal separation from God. Jesus says, eat this, not that. For my flesh is true food and my blood is true drink. Eat to eternal life with God and not eternal separation. I know sometimes we want to eat stuff that, that tastes good, but it's not always the stuff that tastes good that is good for us. It's not always the stuff that we want to eat that's good for us. And sometimes in relationship with God through Jesus Christ, there's some stuff we have to eat that we don't want to eat. Sometimes we have to eat things like pushing down our flesh and pushing down our attitude and pushing down our ego and pushing down our way and it doesn't always taste good going down but Jesus says those who eat my flesh and those who drink my blood I will be in them and they will be in me it is for this reason that we believe as Methodists 
that when we receive the body and blood of Jesus Christ, as we will do later today, that the very real presence of God is present at the table because God is abiding with us. It's not the elements, but it's the presence of God in the things that we're receiving and in us that are interacting with one another that are confirming and affirming that he's in us and we're in him. Anybody who has ever had a really good meal knows that we like to savor a good meal. When the food is good and the drink is refreshing, we like to savor it. We like to let it linger on our palate. You know how you'll eat a good meal and then somebody says, try a little bit of what I have. And you're like, I'm not sure I want to try that because what I had was really good and I just want that to be the last taste in my mouth. We, we want to let it linger on our palate. Communing with God is the same way. The food that is found in Jesus Christ is the best spiritual food there is. The drink that is found in Jesus Christ is the most refreshing spiritual drink that exists. It's an intimate meal that leaves us feeling full and fully satisfied when the meal is over. We want to linger with God a little bit. We want to experience his presence. We want to have that last taste in our mouth. And to be clear, this meal, not just the communion meal, but our day-to-day -day meal with God through Jesus Christ will fill our spiritual bodies and leave us fulfilled. Consuming Jesus on a daily basis is the spiritual diet that our spiritual bodies need so that we can ensure that our spiritual bodies can inherit the kingdom of God. As 1 first, as first Corinthians 15, where we started, reminds us, for flesh and blood, this right here, cannot inherit the kingdom of God. But the flesh and blood of Christ is the spiritual food that will allow our spiritual bodies to inherit the kingdom of God. I don't know about you, but I want to eat a spiritual diet that will leave me fulfilled for all of eternity. I want to eat a spiritual diet that will ensure that my spiritual body has the spiritual nutrients to ensure that I will spend all of eternity in the fulfilling presence of God. I want to eat a spiritual diet that will ensure that my spiritual body has what it needs to spend all of eternity with God. And so Jesus says, eat this, not that. Eat to eternal life and not eternal separation. Church, as, as I prepare to close, think about your spiritual diet. Think about what you are consuming. Think about the health of your spiritual body. Is your spiritual diet healthy? Is your spiritual body spiritually healthy? Do you need to change some of your spiritual eating habits? Do you have some unspiritual weight that you need to lose? Today, Jesus would remind us that there is a spiritually healthy alternative to what we have been consuming. And so Jesus says, eat this, not that. Eat eternal food, not earthly food. Eat this, not that. Eat filling food, not unfilling food. And eat this, not that. Eat to eternal life, not to eternal separation. Eat this, not that. Amen. Whew. Won't you pray with me? God, I know that sometimes because we have these bones and because we have this flesh that it's hard for us to understand that we really are spiritual beings and that it's your breath and your spirit that's inside of us and it's the transformation of us becoming perfected in you as spiritual beings that's going to allow us to experience all of eternity with you. And so, God, if there's someone who hasn't begun that process of working on their spiritual diet because you've not accepted Jesus Christ, you may be physically fit, you may spend all the time in the gym, you may eat properly, you may eat improperly, but you've been focused on physical stuff. You've been focused on your job and your career and your family and your friends and all that stuff that is important in our life, but it's not the most important thing. If you've not been focusing on your spiritual diet and, and you need to recognize that you need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you can begin to change your spiritual eating habits, Habits. won't you just make that confession of faith right where you are 
that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that you believe that Jesus died for our sins and for your sins more particularly, that he got up on the third day and that he's coming back again. If that's you and you believe that today, won't you express it so that God can hear what is going on in your heart? If you're here today and you've been reminded that we all need to work on our spiritual diets, that there are things we should eat and there are things we shouldn't eat. If that's you today, before you come and receive the Lord's Supper, won't you just confess to the Lord those things that you need to take out of your spiritual diet and those things that you need to add in, those things that you're sorry that you've been consuming and those things that you're gonna try to do better and consume as it relates to your spiritual diet. And then if you are under the sound of my voice and you don't have a home in the kingdom of God, Lomax would be that place for you if you so desire. All you need to do is reach out to us and we'll reach back to you with loving and open arms so that you can continue your journey in the kingdom of God and you can do the work that God has called you to do in this vineyard. And so God, we thank you for this time to fellowship one to another. And we pray God that you would now prepare our hearts and minds as we come to the sacred table and experience the Lord's Supper, the body and blood of Jesus Christ. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Let everyone say amen. I'm gonna ask if our musician can just play and sing let us break bread together and then we'll receive communion. our deaconesses to come at this time.
Let your light so shine before men and women that you may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Let us receive the invitation with everyone standing. If any man or woman sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Wherefore, ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbors, and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy way, draw near with faith and take the holy sacrament to your comfort, and devoutly kneeling, make your humble confession to Almighty God. You may be seated. Let us join in the general confession together. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thine divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may ever hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto thee, have mercy upon us. Pardon and deliver us from all our sins. Confirm and strengthen us in all goodness and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Let us repeat the collect. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen. We do not presume to come to this thy holy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold goodness and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under the table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may live and grow thereby, and that, may, and that being washed through his most precious blood, we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of his precious death until he comes again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we humbly beseech thee, and grant that we, receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood, who in the same night he was betrayed, he took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this as often as you can in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. 
And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink ye all of this, for this is the blood of the New Testament, which is shed for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. Uh, we are, have now consecrated the elements. Um, we will um, administer them um, at one o'clock. And so we'll end the communion ritual with the repeating of the Lord's Prayer. So let us all join in the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed by thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. We'll ask that the deaconesses would come now and close the table. wanted to share our April birthdays and anniversaries. If you just give us one moment as it's downloading. know that on today we have a wedding anniversary that's being celebrated today and that is uh, sister Ruthie Brown and brother Cliff Brown who are celebrating their anniversary on today and so we are joining in them as they celebrate their anniversary um, we also have Mr. and Mrs. John Linton who are celebrating their anniversary in May. We have Mr. Reverend and Mrs. Ernie Moore who will be celebrating their anniversary as on the 18th, the Lintons are celebrating on the 16th, and then the 29th, Mr. and Mrs. Dennis Humphrey will be celebrating their anniversary. For the May birthdays, uh, we have Sister Tawana Murray who will celebrate her birthday tomorrow. Um, Morgan Kendall will celebrate his birthday on the 4th. James Gaskill Jr. and Dewan Green will celebrate their birthdays on May 14th. Anthony Duvall will celebrate his birthday on the 15th. Dimitri Powell on the 18th. And our own brother Tommy Ball will celebrate his birthday on the 25th of this month. And so we want to celebrate everyone who has a birthday in the month of May, as well as those who have anniversaries that are coming up in the month of May.
If all hearts and minds are on one accord, uh, we will receive the benediction now. Eat this, not that. And now unto him who was able to keep us from falling, unto him who was able to present us before the presence of his throne with exceedingly great joy, to the all-wise God be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forevermore, and let the people of God say, Thank you.